So I was, you know, obviously, I don't know, everybody knows that you, well, actually, all my close friends know that you're one of my very, very good friends. And so this is really fun to be able to do an interview with you because we can kind of talk about some things that maybe people don't know or don't ask you. Okay. So one of the things that I know is you grew up in a household with boys. And so I'm actually super surprised that you're a super supermodel mm -hmm. and that you're not like playing sports or something else. So why is that? Were you treated like the girl in the household? I would think you would have been a tomboy. Um, well, actually, in some aspects I am, and it's not strange that I am around all the time with boys. Um, I like that boyish energy, although I have to tell you that now that I'm a grown up and I'm <laughs> growing, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> I appreciate a lot the female energy because I think um, I came to a point in my life that um, I really appreciate that. I mean, we women have a lot of things, you know, like men do not understand and we are complex in a good way. And so I think um, I really appreciate it now. But yes, it's true. I was raised up with boys and there was a lot of um men energy around but they treated me as a little princess you know that was the benefit of being and having older brothers um and i think instead of bothering me and just you know pushing me around they they liked me to be kind of like the little princess of the house you know so that's how spoiled i was around them well i can see that because that sort of shows in your later year personality you are still like a princess um <laughs> but you are around a lot of men now so that does make sense why you would enjoy that because you had older brothers and also h how you gravitated maybe to a man who's in a very manly sport um and also to yes. interrupt you i think is a good advantage that i have to have like a man energy around because i can be around boys and they don't feel intimidated by me so i think in that aspect i do have a lot of men energy around like i'm not like a tomboy is that how you yeah. say it but i do have that kind of like vibe where they don't feel i am like you know ooh, um trying to seduce them or they feel intimidated by you know but I mean? they might like, want to seduce you though well, I don't know. I don't feel it. I don't think. I think they will try to seduce a horse more than me. But, you yeah, know, you're like they right. see a horse, they will be more impressed about a nice True. horse than, <laughs> you know, that you yeah, know it. I do. So I think in that sense, um, that's an advantage that I have. No, because a lot of women are not like that. You know, it's like I can live around them and they do not feel intimidated by me. And I think that's good, at least in my environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe when I get out of there. I know what you mean. Yes. They all get intimidated by, you know, pretty woman or nice yeah. women or known woman, you know, so I don't know. But in, in my atmosphere, I think in my, no. no um, yes. Yeah. My atmosphere, no. Yeah. In yeah. my yeah. Environment, environment. In my environment, yeah. they don't feel like, I think, intimidated. Well, so going back to your childhood, uh, beyond the fact that you live with all men, um, I know that you thought about or you were planning on studying political science before you became a model yes now when you were younger what was the dinner table like did your father talk about politics and did you ignore that or did you find it interesting well um i was raised in a family where politics was whole day it's like now i'm married to a guy where polo it's like you know like sports in general is a lot of the things that has to do in my daily conversation at home. Uh, when I was little, um, yes, politics was since you started. And if you didn't read a newspaper, you were like kind of like out of the family, you know. So my father used to have like, I think, three or four newspapers from different because he liked to read because he always said that you didn't have to read just one. You had to read different opinions, you know. So he had Smart man. lots of newspapers. So yeah. he read them all. Um, to be honest, I wasn't that interested, but I did pretend I was because there was no other way. If not, you know, it, it, you were kind of like out of the family. So it was something that um, you had to do at home just to be interested in everyday 
scenario. So uh, politics was a big deal at home. So what do you think your dad wanted you to be or did you have an idea what you wanted to be? And then do you think he was disappointed when you became a model? No, actually, I think he was kind of like a bohemian in some sense. And, and he was very sensitive. He played the guitar. He used to sing. So I think there was something very artistic in him. Yeah. So he always admired. He was the one that always wanted me to do ballet dancing or to do like feminine things. And, you know, that I should look like always like girly. And I was like a little princess. And I think he encouraged me to do those kind of stuff. But um, still there was something going on about like for my parents education was very important I think they wanted me to have an education that's the only thing they were going to leave us so I was raised up with uh, to have good grades to be in a good university to have a good education not only acam academically but also at home it was very important for them so um, so I think he wanted me to do those other things because the artistic part I think came from him rather than from my mother um, but um, I think they didn't know how you know like how to present me to that world because it was not his world so um, well what did you want to be when you were like when I was younger I wanted to be a corporate lawyer and mm -hmm. then one day I worked for a corporate lawyer and I like spelled his name wrong on papers that went to a very important business and uh -huh. then I got fired so then I was like I can't be a lawyer because I'm not that detail oriented so what did you actually want to be when you were younger I think I wanted to be an artist that's for sure but um, I also wanted to be a teacher wow. and I wanted to be an English teacher I mean I really loved languages and of course singing I also liked to sing a lot mm -hmm. when I was younger I used to sing a lot but so I think I really wanted to be like an artist but Again, my house, it was very much about academics. So, I mean, I used to play around being like some kind of artist, but I, I, I didn't know at that time. Uh, so I also wanted to be a teacher, I think. And I, I was, I I was going to study that in the university, but my father said, you're, you're not going to earn a lot of money doing that. So why don't you choose something that you could leave out of that? Yeah. And, he was right. I mean, <laughs> so um, I studied political sciences because I thought um, it was an interesting career. I mean, you had everything, psychology, you had uh, history, you had, um, of course, politics, uh, ciencias sociales, which I don't know how to do, say it in English. So you have a variety of things like um, it will give you a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. although I knew I wasn't going to do anything with it. So but I thought it was a nice career to study. Well, then, so you were in college, and that's when you started. Like, how did you get discovered? I like to ask this question because I've interviewed an, a couple of other women that were discovered. So what was your discovery? How did – it's always I'm walking down the street, and somebody was like, hey, do you want to be a model? But that – how was it for you? Well, I was living in New York, so I got a lot of offers while I was walking in the streets with my parents. But, of course, um, they didn't allow me to do it because – Again, they thought I had to study, go to college, get married. So you were kids. living in New York? I was living in New York. Because you lived in like a lot of different places because your dad was a diplomat. Exactly. So was New York the first out of country place you lived? No. My father was a diplomat. And so um, the first destiny I went with them was Dominican Republic. I lived there for four years. I went to school there. Like half of my primary school, I did it there. It was a, an amazing experience. And then we came back because usually diplomats go like he was the ambassador there at Santo Domingo. We stayed there for four years and then you get removed and then you go back to whatever. And then they send you back again uh, to some other destiny. So my the destinies I got to be or to live in mm -hmm. was Santo Domingo and New York. New York was on my high school. So part of my high school, I graduated there in mm -hmm. Marymount School of New York. So um, which is a Catholic school. It's a Catholic school. Yes. yes. And yeah, I went to all Catholic schools, non-schools, uh, all girls school at that time. Now, now there's, I, I think it's kind of rare to find. All no, we have them school. in California no, everywhere. Yeah. No, here too. But I know, I mean, at that time it was girls and boys. Well, you did have mixed schools, but now it's more like popular. I send my kids to like. Mixed school. Mixed school. I think it's, yeah. 
But for girls, it is less distracting because boys can be incredibly um, invasive to our lives. When we're, I know for me, I got myself in a lot of trouble with boys. So I don't know. I've never been, so I don't know how it is. Well, I, I had enough boys at home, so you did. I, I didn't know how it was, but um, I don't know. I only had like that kind of girl energy all the time and so I only went to girls school but uh, at that time I was living in New York and I got offered a lot to work so since my parents didn't let me when you finish high school in New York or in America I don't know if it's still like that but at that time they let you do what you want to do last year of, of school of high yeah. school yes exactly to work mm -hmm. or to try and work on something that you would like to do in the future that's what I did what you're applying in college so I wanted to be kind of like a model or an artist so I couldn't work as a model because the school didn't let me, but I worked as a booker, like the, the girl that gets them job at an oh, agency there. Oh, I didn't there. know that. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so I kind of knew how it worked, but from the other side, like behind the camera. So Smart. it was fun. I wanted to be in front of the cameras, of yeah. course, uh, but, <laughs> but at that time they didn't let me. So I had to know how the business worked. And so I got a grasp of how the modeling world or industry worked a little bit. And then when I came back to Argentina after finishing high school and my parents went back uh, to Argentina, I was starting college, so I was starting political science. I was studying political sciences, sorry. Um, I got uh, in a relationship with somebody that was very famous or well-known here in Argentina, so I got a lot of attention at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to, but I did And that get was it. the president's son at Correct. the time. And how did you meet him? I'm just curious. Because I just met from him. From your father? Or? No, 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 no. I just met him at a disco. I went with my brothers, and he saw me, and, well, he wanted to go he out He fell in love. Me. I don't know about that, <laughs> uh, but, um, Probably. but he invited me out, and I yeah. said no at the time, and then somehow he got my number, so a couple of weeks later he called me, whatever, and then we got into a relationship. Um, I was very, very young. I don't like to talk a lot about it because, as a lot of people know, well, he's, he's, he's not alive, and it was a tragedy, so f out of respect of the family and himself, I really never talked about it. So, but that's the reason why I got a, l a lot of media attention. Of course, in my house, they didn't like it at all, like to have that attention. So I have to keep it very quiet. Um, but still, you know, I had a lot of paparazzi following me in the university because at that time you didn't have social media. So yeah. like to be a celebrity at that time was to real be a celebrity. Like now you can, everybody knows what you're doing because, you know, you can. Instagram. Which is good because you can <coughs> communicate what you want and who you are it's instead true. of somebody. Um, uh, portrays you as somebody that yeah. they think you are, maybe you're not. So, but at that time, you only had just magazines. So you went and see or know about all these people about just um, going to the store and buy like a magazine. Like Ola or... Yes, Gente was about that time. If you were on the cover of uh, this magazine, this local magazine, which is called Gente, you yes. were somebody. No, I sure. know that because that's what Luli said was yes. her defining moment. Well, it, it was at that time. Mm. I mean, if mm. you were there, you were really there. You were really somebody. I mean, I think at, at that time, like where I was very... Like I felt like kind of like harassed by, by media in that time because I was very young. I was... 17 18 you know so and i had paparazzi for like a whole year like everywhere um, just you know wanting to know who i was going out with or what i was doing and and they didn't say a, a lot of nice things about me at that time that's what i was going to ask no they did not well, what could they say you were so young well, what could they say that I was nasty know. about you it doesn't you. matter but for me yeah. it was very intimidating you know mm -hmm. it's like a lot of attention and and you know if I had surgeries, if I was going out with somebody, and they invented all the time that I was going out with people that I didn't even know. So, you know, at that time, and coming from a very conservative family, yeah. you know, it was kind of like very hard for me. So, but I think you always have a choice to just, so what I did at that time, the first year I thought it was, this is ridiculous. So, you know, I just tried not to go to places where I, you know, uh, was going to get attention like to discos or like you know to uh, public places or just to go I got a lot of invites I didn't go to any of those uh, I started studying and I just went and hang out with my friends from college and I just had tried to have a very normal life 
um, I didn't take advantage of that. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. would have been easier for me just to do everything and accept everything that I was offered. And I thought there was always a limit between my private life, and I still believe in that, um, and the public life. And um, I think once you open that little door from your house, it's very difficult to close it. Mm-hmm. So, Except I, for that now you have a documentary about your family, about your husband. Yes, it's not about me. No, but it is because you're in there and you are a huge part of that family and that's going to open some doors that you might not necessarily like. People are going, I can tell you right now, if that documentary catches mm -hmm. speed, which it will, it depends how it you, will. Well, the, the way that we portrayed it and the way we are doing it, um, there's always, um, and I spoke to the directors, there's always a private spot that I didn't open I mean if you let them they want more you know like no but then people become obsessed with your family and it there's a hype that happens after so but it's <laughs> it is part of what has to happen I mean people are interested in your family interested in your husband interested in you I don't mind that yeah I don't mind that it's, it's just, just part of the deal you signed up for yes I don't mind that and I don't hide myself mm -hmm. I mean I go to polo people see me I do activities regarding my career and I I, I, I am it's just that I think that there are some things that are private I mean for example when my kids were born or my life's kids I mean it's their choice so I don't you know uh, only now because they're more grown-ups and yeah. they decide what to do um, I never hide them though because we always went to polo and there were a lot of people there and they took us pictures and everything it's like it's not like I was covering them or I didn't take them to polo or to the public scene it's just that I don't in give interviews about with my children mm -hmm. or with my husband talking about our lives or in our house or, you know what I mean? I do. I don't open that door. And I, mean, I, th I think that's apparent because I think your kids are so amazing. So thank you. From mother to mother, I love your kids so much. And they do have a humility that they might have not had had you been a different way. I mean, your kids are grounded. I really believe that. And Thank maybe you. because we're involved in polo and you're with animals. I but think so. Also because of the way you raise them. I think. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Um, yes, I think, well, as a mother, I try. Like, you know, you're a mother, so we try. We're not always do it perfect, but we try to give them good values. And, you know, at least for me, it's very important for them to be nice people that people like them yeah. wherever they are and to be generous and kind and humble. For me, that's important, yeah. even though we live in a little um, bubble, because we do, and we're not going to say we don't. Um, you know, they were raised like that in yeah. a little community. and But I think they could be uh, brats, and they're not, <laughs> for being, you know. Yeah. Um, but I do think there is an element of that bubble where kids are protected from some of the things that are happening outside that bubble. And it can be hard once you go outside of the family, the kids grow up because they have been sheltered for a long time and that can be difficult. Well, so did you, one thing I, I meant to, we skipped over because there's a lot mm -hmm. involved in your life that I can talk about. When you were very young, your father obviously mm -hmm. was a diplomat and he ended up being put in jail because of a movement here in Argentina, not because he did something. Uh -huh. And I imagine that must have been extremely traumatic. So how did your parents, how did your mom keep you safe from what other people were thinking? Or I, I don't know enough yes. about the movement. Maybe tell me a little bit about what well, happened. It was a very dark time in our, in the history of Argentina. Um, the militars took over the government and a lot of people were like killed, kidnapped. Um, my father went to jail because of that. Um, he was in politics and um, he was very young. And a lot of horrendous things happened at that time. And I was very little, of course. I just remember um, going to visit my father when he was in jail, but of course it was it must have been so hard for my mom. We didn't talk a lot about it. I just have like little stories because honestly, they, they didn't talk a lot about it. And since I was so young, I mean, mm -hmm. my, my brothers do remember um, a lot of that because they were older than me. 
Um, but I, I know my mother did struggle because that's what she told me. And when my father was four years in jail and two years that when he got out of jail, he couldn't leave the country. Um, so it was a hard time because, yeah, people looked at you differently. And it was a very sensitive time um, in the history of Argentina, you yeah. know. So to have your dad in jail, I mean, I didn't know it because I was very little but I could still sense that there was something n not right and For of sure. course so I was raised up by my uh, grandmother and her sisters my grand aunts that's mm -hmm. how you call them so um, they were at home when my father wasn't home and they helped my mother a lot and it was a miracle how she fought for all of us because she didn't have um she didn't work so we did struggle a lot economically because did they seize his assets when he went to jail like oh yeah i mean that I mean, is so scary my mother traumatic. yes my mother didn't work and so you know i mean yeah so we got help by my grandmother and my grand aunts who were very like humble i mean uh and so but i don't know i just i I know we lack a lot of material things, but we didn't lack love, which I think was what saved us all, because uh, we could have been a mess, really a mess. Yeah. And my mother, I remember my mother being a mother, you know, she did everything. I mean, we didn't have money to buy, for example, m my birthday, they didn't have money to buy um, cards. So my mother made 30 cards by hand, That's you know, so nice. uh, like, you know, like, I remember her staying up late for hours. I mean, just doing one by one. And I used to help her doing that because, of course, I wanted my birthday party. And, you know, I don't know. But it was everything was made by her and food and like a lot of things that, you know, you give for granted. But it, it for us, it was like she was she did everything for us. So talking about your career. What, what would you say was the the years that were the highlight for your career? And I know that you've been a TV host. I, I saw an interview where you were interviewing Mick Jagger, which had to have been totally amazing. Yes. And then you modeled, did many different campaigns. Then you did by Londo, which I know was amazing for amazing. you because you love to dance. Yes. So when you look back on your career, and this is, I guess, maybe pre-Adolfo because mm -hmm. you kind of had to give up some of that for him. What was the highlight? And and to that note as well, if you could be doing anything you want right now, mm -hmm. let's say you didn't have kids and a husband, what would you be doing? Well, first of all, to say um, at the beginning, like it's sometimes you get here, but you have to maintain yourself. So at the beginning, um, since people were interesting, interested on me because media especially about my relationship it was I had to prove that I was there you know that I had a background um, and I did have a background you know like so it was kind of like sometimes they didn't know where to put me because I came from a conservative family my father was a diplomat I was a very well educated kid so you know it was kind of strange that I was part of this business and I had no needs like you know like yeah 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 that hunger you like did it I, for fun exactly well, not for fun. well, well yeah yeah I started it, it started as a game you yeah. know because I wanted to be independent and my my father was very powerful and I came from a man's you know energy so I had to look for my ways you know to get apart from them and stand up for myself and so I started a modeling career first of all to make my boyfriend jealous when I broke up so that's the fun part of that that's funny <laughs> so that's I started a funny. career so yeah. it is it did start it as a game I just started a modeling because he was so jealous and he didn't want me to do anything so that's the reason why I said okay we're breaking up I'm going to a modeling agency and of course in my house they didn't want me to do that either so I think it was a that rebellious, was rebellion, yeah. exactly, at that time. Well, that's a pretty nice rebellion. Most people go drink and do drugs, and you just <laughs> went and became a supermodel. Yes, I just, well, I had, of course, I did have something, because if not, nobody will get me, you know I mean? They, of course, there was something in me that I had it, I had it, and but for me, it started as a game. So for the people that hire me, it was a job, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. But yeah. I did it with that unconsciousness. So it was very 
fun the process. But you I know love what I that. Mean? That's the best things happen doing it that way. Because I was studying at you the same authentic. time. Yes. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had I was trying to keep my family happy. So I still was studying and doing getting good grades because my fa- my mother not only wanted me to study, but she o- she wanted me to have good grades. So there was no chance I came below a nine. The, like 10 is the most here. <laughs> so to, you know, nine was the perfect thing to get at home. So... Um, everything has to be very like my mother always write everything with uh, I say the capital letters you know like mom with a capital letter Maria with a capital letter you know everything you have to do it like kind of like perfect, perfect. and right I can see that because you are kind of like that <laughs> thank you so yeah. I, you know well yeah then I know that there's kind of like grace in between so I, I you know as I grow up I try to I struggle a lot with you know trying to be more relaxed yes yes about things so um and i try with my kids although they think i'm very strict and i think i'm the most easygoing mother on earth but you know how it is how it works you think you're doing it right and suddenly you're not but (laughs) but well um yes so i started uh as a as a game and then you asked me where were the key moments of my career what was your favorite like you could be doing so many things i mean you speak other languages you sing Mm -hmm. you dance i mean Mm -hmm. there's a million things you could be doing during that time you got famous for a number of things what was the highlight what was what was the i think the breaking point was when i did um tv show called el rajo which was kind of like what every model wanted to be in it was a show that was kind of like um very stylish but at the same time that's where i got to interview mick jagger and robbie williams and a couple of these huge guys but also the huge guys here in argentina um, everybody wanted to be part of that show and I had two other models uh, contacting that show before me yeah so if you were a model that's where the show you wanted to be kind of like the house of MTV at the time yeah, yeah, remember yeah. what Cindy Crawford yeah, was like it was amazing everyone it loved was, it uh, everybody loved yeah. it and she was so like so that was the show to be in it at that time so I think that was a very breaking point because also the girls that did it before they didn't have a live show uh, it was all edited. Oh, so yours, I remember you talking about this the other day. It was live like live. Mine was. So you couldn't fuck up. Like So we can it do was here. the first host that they gave it like a yeah. live show. So I really loved it because the the key of the success of the show was that it was so well edited. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was everything moved very fast. And you had to speak in English. No, no, no. It was you in didn't? Spanish, but my oh. interviews, if I had to interview yeah, Mick Jagger, of Mick course. Jagger, yes. yes. No, no, it was in Spanish, but it was... Um, to be able to do it live for the first time, That's it was a big hard. thing. And it was so much fun. I mean, I really liked it. I even liked it more because, you know, I like that kind of adrenaline, you know, like you because if you edit it, I mean, you can do mistakes. You and, totally can. Yeah. And then the other breaking point was the dancing with the stars. I mean, when you model, I think people do not expect a lot of things from you. So. If you dance, it's like, oh, she can dance. You know, like the good thing about that is like they don't expect anything just to be nice and pretty. And, you know, that's the only thing. And you can dance because I've watched a lot of your (laughs) clips. So if you speak well, it's like, whoa, she speaks at that time. You know, now everything changed, you know, like. No, but I think models, people don't expect a lot from models. But you are so complex and intelligent. Thank you so much. And that's one of the reasons why I was so excited to interview you is because there's you're so smart <laughs> Thank and you so and I know that people really focus on kind of the outside yeah on the way of life I'm all yeah. she might be you know well she's married to a polo player yes. and she lives you know in that little castle and well you do <laughs> <laughs> I do it's true <laughs> I do I made my own little castle and I'm your neighbor which so is yes cool. <laughs> but um no what I think is like uh, yeah people do not expect anything so I was for me I had everything just to gain i mean it was a winning game because if you more or less speak english it's like wow she speaks english and if and she you moved, speak very well and if you move your leg like this oh she can dance yeah. uh, and then suddenly you know they discover that you could do all all these things and that you know you break a lot of um, um stereotypes exactly thank you well i did watch a clip and i'm sure i mean you know it, Adolfo was in the audience and he looked mortified not because <laughs> you weren't doing a good job but because you were so good <laughs> and know. that's got to be stressful to watch I mean dancing is a very intimate sport and actually dancing with the stars in the United States a lot of the dancers and the participants end up hooking up 
because you are exposed. First yeah. of all, well, because you're half naked, which is very nice. One thing is that then he gets nervous. Adolfo is very competitive, so he wanted me to do oh, good. That's nice. And so you know, he's so competitive that um, yes, he is. he couldn't stand me doing something not right. Yes, you know. So um, and you went top five, right? I went to the finals. That's amazing. And I lost in the final, in the first one. Then well, I why did, did you lose? More. What happened? I don't know. I, I think uh, Carla, first of all, she was a dancer. I wasn't a dancer. I wasn't I wasn't a dancer. I mean, I, I oh, took two years. Oh, the other girl was a dancer. Yeah, she was a dancer. Okay. And she was more popular than me. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end, people vote for you. So um, she was more popular than me. And of course she danced. <gasps> That's right, it's a popularity contest. Yes, because people call and then well, you get you into the show or no. You should have smiled more, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, <laughs> it was, yeah, she was more popular. Yeah. So I think, and, and it, it was good that she won. Um, and we were friends and, and, and she did amazing. And I, I did not do that good in the final. To be honest, I was never nominated, which is was a big thing. Okay. And um but then the final I really got very nervous. My father was dying also at the time. So and of course That's as hard. I told you I kept some things private. So yes. a lot of people I could have used that to provoke you could have. Uh, empathy to people and mm -hmm. I chose not to because again for me my private life is private and um when I was at the final, my father was almost dying that day. Um, thank God he survived because I, I, after the show, I was able to see him. Um, but it was very, th there was, I was dancing. The contest was lasting for three months and he was struggling a lot in the hospital. So it That's was a very, very hard, hard time. Very but hard. I have to say you, they saved me because for me to be able to go to rehearsal and dance and they, they took care so much about me. Um, all the time. So it was very um, um, curative for me. Yes. I mean, healing. It healing. was very healing. Uh, curative. That's not no. a word, no? No. But no. Uh, you healing. can make it up. You I can don't judge <laughs> you. Nobody judge you. Half no, the I know, people I don't know. even know what you're saying. Curative. Uh, <laughs> it's a new word. We'll put it in the uh, dictionary. Yes. No, but it was a very healing process for me uh, to be able to do that dancing with the stars. Yeah. Uh, and so I was kind of like, very tired by the final and I was very nervous I mean it was like whoa because now they did like I don't know 30 editions already but at that time it was the third one and and so it was a big thing again uh, there were not models accepting to be on the show because it was you know like uh, people were afraid to dance yeah life you know and I didn't have a lot but I just I thought I was able to do you it. You were amazing. I mean, uh, thank I, you. And I learned for me it was a school. So and good. after that, I started studying. I've been studying dancing yeah, like for, for for 10 years. So so that kind of goes into my next segment of this interview. Mm -hmm. Now, so we'll see, So you had this huge career and then you meet Adolfo. Yeah. And the reason why I don't talk too much about him because everyone talks about him and we know kind of your life with Adolfo. But w what we really don't know mm -hmm. is what you've been doing behind the scenes. Because you're quiet. Mm -hmm. You really are quiet about all the things you do. Mm -hmm. But for example, I know that you have a clothing company with yes. your partner's Lanthropy. And we're, you just did a collaboration with Ivana, mm -hmm. which was... I have um, my jewelry as well. My your rock jewelry. Clothes. Yeah. So, so those things are really important and I love that you keep quiet about that but yeah. I like wish you wouldn't be quiet about <laughs> that because you're an entrepreneur and you're also an entrepreneur in Argentina which is so so difficult I'm horrible selling my own things you know like I could sell your things yes. but I, I'm horrible with mine because I think there's a lot of ego there, you know, like sensitive ego. Like if somebody didn't like it, I mean, I would feel but like you, if you don't like my kids, I will feel offended. It's like, yeah. it's like your little babies, you know, so you work on them, you mature them. And when you're ready, you're ready. I mean, I know we have something very special in what we do. In, I, in my different philanthropy, in my jewelry. Yes. And I like people, I like the process of people discovering it instead of me saying hey listen I have this so since I do it thank God I don't have I don't have to leave out of that yes you know I have I can leave this process in another way you know what I mean so my partner is more commercial she will sell you anything so I'm the other part of the thing so for me it's kind of like again it was a process just by casualty. I entered because I thought it was fun and I wanted to do something for myself besides 
going with Adolfo everywhere and raising my family. So I said, what can I do that I can be persistent? Because the problem with polo life is like you're never constant. You're traveling every three months. Yeah. So if you have a degree, where are you going to do your job? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to raise your kids. You have to move every... Because as a daughter of a diplomat, at least we had the chance to stay four years in a place. But you that still was the precursor for living your life now. Yeah, I totally. think that's why you can be a nomad. So when your husband retires, I don't have friends. Yes, you that, do. That you know, push that love me, to do things, push me <laughs> to do things. You it's know, true. with MV Maria Vasquez, like my lingerie, because a lot of people do not know, but Sarita was involved in that. So in that capsule collection with Pompavana, which I adore to do, and I'm so grateful that you pushed me to do it, because not only we met Evie, who's amazing, amazing, and we love her, and she's. It's amazing what she no, does. No, she is amazing. And I know we. You have a fetiche with underwear so <laughs> i do yes the host has fetiche for do. underwear and lace i'm and, obsessed you know, ooh, with she's it. obsessed and so you got me obsessed into yes. that too and so it was the process was so fun so um of course it's good to have friends that push you to do things that well, maybe you don't think about that's you know? right i and actually i'm gonna say for the record i did go to maria <laughs> first with this idea of the podcast to do it with me of course and she ignored my texts yes. never <laughs> even said a word about it and i just sat there hanging well your friends want you to come out to light as well yes. and you're capable of doing by yourself okay. and you know be you know confidential well, in Argentina and to have your own no. point of view <laughs> you know of us and I do. you did it amazing and great and well, thank you you because you know what you little lady you always need like a neat like a net nest or yes like you know to be able to do things sometimes so it's good for you to go out by yourself like you do on well, that I'm horse and speed I know. Well, so that's it's weird for me to be doing this anyway. Well, but because I'm in this country and I know nobody, and honestly, just like you were saying about mm -hmm. the things that you do, it's there's no pressure because nobody knows me, and I can really truly engage with the people I'm meeting and have fun in the process. It's so fun, you know, and yeah. have fun in the process, and I, that I think that's because it wasn't me; it was your. Thing. Yes, you know what I mean. So I thought it's 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 a process that you have to go by yeah. yourself. Well, uh, I have more here. ideas for you. Don't worry. I know, I know, I know. I know we're going to end up traveling everywhere, you know, it's or true. doing something. Of course, so you're going to see us for sure. But um, I think it was part of your own search here in Argentina, and you had to do it. So that's why <laughs> Eve is the producer. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm here going. laughs> as a you know, you as a guest, you guys yes. are really supportive. Well, I think that being involved with women in business and mm -hmm. also I don't know rooting for each other. I mean that's really important in life and yes. I think that's one of the benefits of having women owned businesses or doing business with your friends is that yes. we can support each other in a completely different way than totally. the normal way we do things with women. I mean I've said to you many times before about the competitiveness of women and how I really really want to support women and so yeah I know I it's, know about your interest in that. Yeah. And it's amazing. And you do it. You do it in polo. You do it among other women's business. And I think it's very And um, you do it amazing. too without even yes. thinking about it. I mean, you do business. Yeah. You well, do business. I have, yeah. And you I have do. two girls, you know, at home. So you we do. are majority. Who are amazing. <laughs> We're three against two boys. Because <laughs> Adolfo and Poroto and then Mila, Mia and me, you know. So we have a lot of women power at home. Um, but yes. I mean, we live in a society that is very competitive besides women. Yes. We are very competitive as yes. well, uh, sometimes with no reasons about, yeah. like, you know. Well, I think that's because Argentina has a macho lifestyle. And sometimes be. I believe the competition is because of men. Could I love be. men. Don't get me wrong. I love my husband. I love men in general. But I think that we compete for men's attention, for all sorts of things. See, and that causes a lot now. of it. It's changing yeah. now. And it's changing a lot and drastically, thank God. And it's speeding like everywhere else, also here in Argentina. So, um, you know, women are getting a lot of attention and power and they you are. know we embrace each other yes. much more than we used to do I mean like everywhere else in the world it's true and it's true that polo it's like you play polo and so uh, it's it's more like a men's no but I I think men are really supportive of women in polo I mean your husband played with Sunny Hill yes before well, and he was rare 
He was know, rare at the but time. But maybe that's why you like him so much. Yes, he was he was rare. He was always and I always knew that Adolfo will have her first child would be a girl. So <laughs> and he loved that, you know, like he loved no, women he's in general. He's like um he's very supportive of women in general and of course in, in in sports. And of course he's a guy and he has his own demons about it too, about girls too, but <laughs> they all do. <laughs> I know. So when he retires where is Maria? Like, can you, are you going to be at the farm drinking homegrown oh, no. milk? What's no, I'm, happening? No, I'm never at the <laughs> farm. I'm always in the city. But, but what are you going to do when you have to, you get the chance to stay in one place? I'm, I think you're going to be restless. I have no idea, but what I really don't want him to be is at home all day, pretending that I'm at home, <laughs> you know, doing <laughs> you're not gonna what be. I've done. No, I'm not going to yeah. be. Uh, I think, I don't know. I, I will always be searching for something. Hopefully I can uh, do... Um, any of my activities just even in the public life or maybe with my brands a, in a more constant pace you know yeah, like you have more time yes to have more time mm -hmm. and to do it every day and uh, what about living abroad that's kind of my dream like to have a routine no I love Argentina I hope we could live here and I hope um, um, no I like I like to live here because I was always everywhere else, you yeah. know, and I really appreciate it. Home. Thank God. Yes. I want to be home and I want to mm -hmm. be rooted and I want to have a routine and I want to see, you know, my kids coming back and forth, but I'm at home, you know, with my own things. And um, so I don't know. I hope I, I, I can be working in what I love, which is um, maybe having a TV show or maybe the radio or maybe with my brands. 